Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander. I'm BK. Follow us on Instagram, check out our Discord, and Patreon. Links in the description. Kyle has a cool take on partner commanders Timna and Sakashima. He's basically playing Shadow Tribal, making sure that he's going to deal damage to his opponents. Chris tweaked his Sauron the Dark Lord deck. It's more of a wheel commander now, making sure his opponents are discarding and he's benefiting from it. Matt is looking to vote often and vote hard with Elrond of the White Council as his commander. He's got all of the juicy voting cards. And I'm playing Marin of Clan Nel Ta. I'm going to sacrifice my own stuff, reanimate them, and take advantage of ETB and LT. TB triggers. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It truly helps us out. And stick around for an appearance from my fat cat, Meatball. He's so chunky. Kyle kicked us off with a deserted beach and passed over to Chris, who plays a mountain as his land into a soul ring with that beautiful Lord of the Rings artwork. He passed the turn over to Matt, who plays Vine Glimmer Snarl as his land before passing over to me. I play an overgrown tomb, taking two life in order to have it enter the battlefield untapped so I can cast Elvish Mystic. Elvish Mystic doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to try to kill it. On Kyle's turn, he plays Exotic Orchard as his land, and then he casts Looter Ill Core. This thing's got Shadow, and it'll loot when he hits an opponent with it. He passes the turn to Chris, who plays Reliquary Tower as his land, and then he drops Relic of Sauron. So he's getting a ton of ramp action going on right now. He passes the turn over to Matt, who plays Command Tower, and he suspiciously passes the turn back over to me. I draw and play Golgari Signet, and I kept a risky hand because I don't have a turn 2 land. So I pass over to Kyle, and he moves right into combat with his Looter Ill Core, dealing a damage to Chris, and looting. He then plays Sky Cloud Expanse as his land for turn. He then casts Soltari Trooper, and quickly follows that up by casting Soltari Foot Soldier. Both of them get Shadow, and one gets bigger. He passes the turn over to Chris, who plays Volatile Fjord as his land. And with all of his ramp, he casts his commander, Sauron the Dark Lord, on turn three. Pretty good. He passes over to Matt, who plays a forest as his land, followed by a wood elves. This triggers Sauron, getting him an orc army. And then Matt will go and find a forest, entering the battlefield tapped before passing over to me. I draw, and I sigh with relief after finding a command tower. That'll be my land for turn, and then I cast Guardian Project. This triggers Sauron, amassing him one again. Onto Kyle's turn, he plays an island as his land before casting Coastal Piracy. So now, whenever his creatures deal damage to an opponent, he could draw cards. That triggered Sauron, and he moves into combat, swinging at both Chris and Matt. They resolve their damage. Kyle gets to then draw three cards, plus an additional one for Looter Ilkor, pitching a land to the bin. He passes the turn to Chris, who plays a swamp, and then he drops Feast of Sanity. So now when Chris discards cards, he'll be able to sling some damage around and gain life. He casts Whispering Madness, so each player is going to discard their hand. Whispering Madness also has Cypher, so now it's encoded on Sauron, meaning when Sauron deals damage, Chris can cast a copy of Whispering Madness for free. So we all discard our hands and draw back up to six. Chris's Feast of Sanity triggers three times, so he pings down a creature on each one of our board states, notably my Elvish Mystic, who I really needed. He then moves into combat, swinging Sauron at Matt and his army at Kyle. They resolve their damage, but Chris likes the cards in his hand, so he doesn't want to wheel right now. He passes the turn to Matt, who played a forest, into a soul ring of his own and that triggered Sauron before casting Lightning Greaves, which also triggers Sauron. He then casts an Elvish Mystic, and honestly, I'm offended. Afterwards, he casts Cultivate. So he'll go find a land, have it enter the battlefield tapped, and put one into his hand as well. In this case, both are islands. Chris got a much bigger orc army out of this exchange, but Matt feels confident he could deal with it. He equips his Elvish Mystic, and then passes the turn to me. I play a forest, and cast Reclamation Sage. I get a card draw thanks to Guardian Project, and then I blow up Chris's Feast of Sanity with its ETB. I pass the turn over to Kyle, who plays Morphic Pool as his land, and then he drops a Soul Ring of his own. Chris amasses one, and then Kyle moves into combat with both of his shadowy things at Chris. When they deal damage, he gets two card draws thanks to Coastal Piracy before casting Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, and he has it enter as Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. He passes the Chris, who plays a Drowned Catacomb, as his land for turn before casting Orcish Bowmasters. Things are getting kind of out of hand over here. When it ETBs, he targets Sakashima, and Kyle casts Path to Exile, targeting Sauron as a response, and Kyle satisfies Sauron's ward ability by sacking Sakashima. And given Path to Exile, Chris goes and finds a swamp entering the battlefield tap. Afterwards, he casts Sauron, the White Hand. So now his goblins and orcs have ward 2, and he'll amass more orcs. He casts Jace Balaran, triggering his Sauron, the White Hand, getting him another amass trigger making his army even bigger. He then activates Jace's first ability, having each player draw a card. 
This triggers Orcish Bowmasters three times, so he'll throw around some damage targeting mine and Kyle's creatures. He amasses even more and moves into combat with his Orc army at me, dropping me down to 22. Um, we need to get this guy under control. Matt plays an island and a growth spiral. So this will trigger his Orcish Bowmasters and allow him to play an additional land in the form of an island. Bowmasters hits Matt in the face and amasses again. Matt then casts Genesis Wave, where X equals 6. So he's going to look at the top 6 cards of his library and put all the permanents out there onto his battlefield. He finds a Field of Ruin, Beast Whisperer, and Arwen Weaver of Hope. The rest get pitched to the bin, and then he casts Elven Farsight. So he'll scry 3, looking for a creature card, which will allow him to draw it, if that's the case. And he does so, finding a Marwin, and he gets to draw that, triggering Orcish Bowmaster. And Chris will have that damage be dealt to Arwen, killing her dead, unfortunately. Then Matt moves his boots over to his Beast Whisperer, and passes to me, I play a Swamp. And then cast my commander, finally, Marin of Clan Neltoth. This draws me a card, thanks to Guardian Project, again triggering Chris's Bowmasters. He'll throw a damage at Matt's Elvish Mystic. I cast Reanimate, and look into my bin, finding a Spore Frog, and have that cute little guy enter my battlefield at the cost of one life. It also draws me another card, which triggers Orcish Bowmaster, and Chris will ping me one point of damage to my face, and I'll activate Spore Frog, killing it. That'll trigger Marin, so I'll get an experience counter, and then on my end step, I get my Spore Frog back, triggering Guardian Project again, drawing me a card, triggering Chris's Bowmasters, amassing, and dealing one damage to my Spore Frog, which in response, I just sacrifice it and gain another experience counter. I have to discard on my end step. I move to Kyle's turn, and he drops Verdant Catacombs as his land, cracking it, finding a swamp, and playing Siren Storm Tamer as a follow up to all that. He then casts Dothy Voidwalker. So that's really going to pump the brakes on my plan, but also if Chris is wheeling cards, then that could give Kyle access to a lot of cards. He follows that up by casting his commander, Timna the Weaver, and with that out, he'll cast Augur Ilvek as well, another shadowy creature that has a very specific upkeep trigger to gain him some life. He passes the turn to Chris, who plays an island as his land for turn, before casting Terminate on my Marin of Clan Neltoth. Terminate is exiled, and Dothy Voidwalker has access to that. My Marin dies, and then Chris casts Darnable Pact, where X equals 7. So he's going to target Kyle. So Kyle loses 7 life and draws 7 cards. And Darnable Pact is exiled. Because Kyle drew 7 cards, Orcish Bowmasters triggers 7 times. So Dothy Voidwalker, Timna, and Augur Ilvek all get dead. Chris once again activates Jace, having each player draw a card. Bowmasters sees those three cards drawn, dealing two to Matt's face, one to Siren Stormtamer, before Chris moves to combat, swinging his army at Kyle and Saruman at me. This was enough damage to knock Kyle out of the game. He passes the turn over to Matt, who plays an exotic orchard as his land for turn, before casting Marwin the Nurturer. This will trigger his Beast Whisperer, drawing him a card, then triggering his Orcish Bowmasters. He deals one to Matt's face and amasses yet again. He then equips Marwin the Nurturer with his boots and casts his commander, Elrond of the White Council. So we have to either vote for plus one plus one counters on Matt's stuff or give him a creature of ours. So we render our votes after Orcish Bowmaster dealt him one to his face. Matt gets plus one counters on his stuff before casting Plea for Power. He wants to secure his time vote, so he casts Illusion of Choice. So he gets to draw a card, triggering Orcish Bowmaster, as well as choose how we're going to vote. So he decides that he wants to have everybody vote for time, giving him a whole another turn after this before casting Paradise Druid. He draws a card because of Beast Whisperer, again triggering Bowmasters, dealing him one to his face. He moves into combat, swinging his Beast Whisperer at Jace, knocking him down a peg or two, and then he gets to take his second turn. He casts Elvish Arch Druid, which will pump up his elf team, but he gets to draw a card first and trigger Orcish Bowmasters, taking one more to the face. He plays a forest as his land before casting Sail into the West. Matt and I both vote for Return, because Embark would be almost suicide versus Chris's board state. So we get to return two things from our graveyards to our hands. He then casts Raise the Palisade, so he chooses Elf, and all of the other creature types in the battlefield get bounced back to their owner's hands. He moves into combat at Chris and Jace. Now that his board is clear, Jace dies and Chris drops to 19. He passes the turn over to me, I play Tainted Wood as my land for turn, and cast my Spore Frog again hoping to not die to combat damage. I draw a card and finally Orcish Bowmasters is not there to cause damage. 
Chris's turn, he plays Saruman the White Hand again, and then because he returned Feast of Sanity from his graveyard to his hand, he's casting that bad boy once again too. This will allow him to amass another orc army. Then he casts his orcish bowmasters again at sorcery speed. He'll have the one damage be dealt to Elvish Arch Druid, because he has a follow-up in the form of Burning Inquiry. He'll amass thanks to Saruman. Each player will draw three cards, and we enlist Kyle's support to help us randomly determine which three cards out of all of our hands are discarded. Orcish Bowmaster saw all those card draws, and Feast of Sanity saw Chris's discards, so a bunch of damage gets flung around and Chris gains a little bit of life as well. He finished off Elvish Archdruid and then targeted my Spore Frog with a point of damage. In response, I flashed in Dictate of Erebos to sacrifice my Spore Frog, therefore making my opponents each sacrifice a creature as well. Using the remaining points of damage Chris can throw around, he finishes off Beast Whisperer, Elrond, and Matt's Paradise Druid as well. Chris re-amassed his army and passed the turn to Matt, who draws and then cycles Tranquil Thicket. He's looking for gas. When he drew that card, it triggers his Beastmaster, and then he casts Elrond of the White Council once again. So we vote Aid, Aid, and Fellowship, so he gets two plus one plus one counters on each one of his things. He puts his super fast boots on Elrond and attacks Chris directly with it. Sniffing out a trick, Chris just takes the beats, then Matt casts Expropriate. I told you he had juicy vote cards. We vote money, money, and time. So he will take my Dictate of Erebos, takes that Orcish Bowmasters away from Chris, and gets another turn. He takes the other turn, dropping a forest as his land into a Fathom Mage. When that ETB'd, Marwyn gets bigger. He shuffles his shoes around again and attacks Chris with both Marwyn and Elrond. Dictate of Erebos makes for some weird blocks, so Chris takes the beats down to three. On my turn, I play a forest and then recast my commander, Marin of Clan Nel Toth. Getting a card draw, this time triggering Bowmasters on Matt's side of the board, he deals one to Chris's face and amasses one. Unfortunately, I had a real hard time getting my engine churning, so I moved to my end step and get Spore Frog back out as a means of protection. That drew me a card, triggering Bowmasters, dealing one more to Chris's face. On Chris's turn, he untaps and moves right into combat at Matt. Matt chumps with his orc army, which will trigger Dictate of Erebos, so Chris kills his own army and I kill my Sport Frog, getting another experience counter because of Marin. Then he casts Ob Nixilis, Reignited. When he casts it, Saruman gives him another army, and then he activates Ob Nixilis to destroy his own orcish bowmasters on Matt's side of the board. Dictate again triggers, forcing me to sack my Marin as well as Chris's orc army once again. As a follow-up to that, Chris casts Talisman of Creativity, which again triggers Saruman, getting him another blocker back up. Afterwards, he casts Anger, which is normally best served in the bin, but in this case it serves as a blocker for him here. He passes the turn over to Matt, who casts Opt, scrying one and drawing a card, and for the second time in the game, it seems Orcish Bowmasters does not trigger, because it's dead. He then casts Herald of Secret Streams. When that enters a battlefield, it'll trigger his Fathom Mage, giving him a plus one counter on that. Then he casts Celeborn the Wise, again triggering Fathom Mage as well as Marwyn the Nurturer. He then casts Aristor of the Council. When that ETBs, it gives Marwyn another plus one plus one counter. And after doing a little bit of math, he moves into combat. And because his creatures with plus one counters on him can't be blocked, he deals enough damage to both of us to knock us out of the game. Congratulations, Matt. Job well done. And there you have it, that's the game. And Sauron and Orcish Bowmasters really did a ton of work that game. Sometimes you just don't find the removal when you need it. Let us know what you thought about the game in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching.